Hey guys, Will here. So something a little bit different for you today, but if you've ever tried to run XMP profiles for your RAM on a uh, Intel-based system, 13th gen or 14th gen, you may have run into issues achieving the advertised speed on your RAM, running into things like blue screens or crashes and uh, annoying things like that. Now, I was having the same issue with my previous 13th gen PC and the new 14th gen PC that I've just built. And I did a bunch of digging around on that and I think I've gotten to the bottom of it. So I wanted to share with you today what's fixed it for me and will hopefully fix it for you as well. So let's dive in. So before we get into the fix, I do just want to quickly provide a little bit of surrounding context for those of you who might not be familiar with XMP profiles and exactly what they are. If you're already familiar with all that stuff and you just want to get straight to the fix, I'll drop some chapters down below so you can do that. But if you aren't familiar, I would recommend just stick around so that you understand exactly what it is that we're doing today. That will help you into the future to get better performance out of your PC, hopefully. So with modern RAM, the speed that's actually advertised on the packet is just the speed that the RAM itself is tested at and able to run at. Doesn't necessarily account for other components within the system. Now, particularly with modern systems, the memory controller itself actually sits on the CPU. So without a good quality memory controller, you're not necessarily guaranteed to even be able to reach the speeds that are advertised on the RAM. So there's never any guarantee that you will reach those advertised speeds. Now with the case of DDR5 RAM, it's actually uh, clocked at 4800 megahertz by default. Anything over that is considered an overclock, even though you might be only setting it to the speed that's advertised on the packet. So hopefully that's clear and gives you a little bit of context of what we're doing today. Now it doesn't really matter which motherboard manufacturer you're dealing with here. We've got an ASUS motherboard in today's example, but you'll have some sort of an automatic mode which will clock the RAM at the speed that it thinks it should run. Typically in the case of DDR5 RAM, it would limit it to that 4,800 megahertz. You then got manual if you wanna configure everything manually yourself. And then you've got what is called XMP profile. So XMP profile one is a profile that it actually loads for the RAM specifically that you have in the PC. And that will load in settings for the voltage of the RAM, the, uh, the clock speed of the RAM and primary timings. XMP2 takes things a little bit further and also loads secondary timings for the RAM too. And then XMP Tweaked is actually ASUS's optimized settings for the RAM that you have. So what they do is they test their motherboards with a selection of qualified different types of RAM and they cook into this profile the settings that they find work best for that particular RAM. So I typically do like to use XMP Tweaked as my baseline for ASUS motherboards, but you can go with XMP1 or XMP2 if you want to as well. So let's dive into the fix now and I wanna assume here that you have a stable CPU overclock. Now it's always a good practice to make adjustments to one thing at a time, not make multiple adjustments at the one time because if you do introduce instability into your system, you're not gonna know what exactly it was that caused that instability. So if you have made any adjustments to your CPU overclock, the first thing I'd recommend you do is scroll all the way down to your RAM speed, I just went a little bit past it there, and wind that all the way back to that 4800 speed, which is the default speed for DDR5 and uh, just make sure that your system is in fact stable when you clock your RAM down. We just wanna ensure here that we're not chasing our tail and actually dealing with a CPU overclock issue rather than a RAM issue. So once you've established that and you're certain that your CPU overclock is stable, go back to your default DRAM frequency. And then what I want you to do on an ASUS motherboard is scroll across to tool. And what we're gonna be doing is just saving this user profile so that if we do cause any issues with what we're doing here, we can go back and we're not gonna lose all our settings or uh, have a bricked PC. So on ASUS, it's as simple as just going down to user profile, going down to profile name, typing in a name that allows you to easily identify the profile that you wanna save, and then saving a slot here as well. So I've got a profile for 6.1 gigahertz XMP stable, and then I would just overwrite that profile. That allows me to go back to the exact settings that I had before watching this video, just in case it does cause any issues for you. So after you've done that, you're gonna go back to the extreme tweaker menu on an ASUS motherboard or wherever you find your RAM settings on other brands, and you're going to make sure that you've got your XMP profile loaded. Uh, as I said before, I like to use XMP tweaks, but you can use one or two here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down all the way down to where we find system agent. So depending on what other settings you've got in place here will determine how far down you have to scroll for this. Your screen might not look exactly the same as mine here because I do have quite a few custom voltage values and offsets and whatnot, but we're looking for CPU system agent voltage. Now by default, you're gonna see that that is on automatic. And if you've never changed this setting before, you're probably gonna find that the voltage that it's sitting at is somewhere around the 1.3 to 1.32 volt range. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set that to manual mode 
and we're gonna set a value here of 1.12 volts. Now the reason for this is that some very clever people on the internet have determined that there seems to be some sort of a bug with, uh, with some CPUs within the 13th gen and 14th gen range being particularly sensitive to this system agent voltage. Now typically in overclocking, the, the philosophy is more voltage means more headroom up until the point where you reach some sort of a thermal limit or voltage limit. So up to a certain point, it'll be stable and adding more voltage will often give you a little bit more clock speed or more aggressive timings. And then beyond that point, either heat becomes an issue or you just reach the point where adding more voltage is only adding more heat and not actually giving you any more overclocking headroom. What we're finding with these 13th gen and 14th gen CPUs is that in some cases, not every case, even up to 1.3 volts or even anything over 1.2 volts in some cases is just too high and actually introduces instability. So it's a little bit counterintuitive here. Normally you would think more voltage equals more headroom, but it's actually the opposite with these CPUs. So go ahead and set this to 1.12 volts as a starting point. If you are finding that it's unstable, you can up this. And we're finding that the, the cutoff seems to be somewhere around that 1.2 volt range. So I'd recommend rather than working backwards from 1.3 volts, start at 1.12 volts and then work your way up if you need to. You're probably gonna find the sweet spot is gonna be somewhere between 1.12 volts and 1.2 volts if you have one of these CPUs that is impacted. And that one simple change there literally took me from only being able to run about 54, 56, megahertz on my 6400 megahertz DDR5 RAM at 1.4 volts, all the way to being able to run the advertised speeds of 6400 megahertz all the way down at 1.32 volts. So quite a lot lower on the voltage than what it was by default in the XMP profiles, 1.4 volts by default here. And dropping that voltage, even though it didn't give me any more headroom in terms of timings or clock speed, did actually drop my temperatures for my RAM quite significantly. I was pushing above 65 degrees, even up towards 70 degrees Celsius uh, under extreme memory testing uh, stress testing scenarios. Now it doesn't go above about 58 degrees Celsius. So quite a significant change there. Obviously the lower the temperature, the more longevity you're gonna get out of your components. That's always a good thing. So that was the fix for me. Let me know in the comments down below if it helps you as well. If you do run into any issues, your system's not stable and won't boot, you can hit that CMOS reset button on your motherboard and go back in and load your profile that you had before. And uh, yeah, apologies if it does cause issues for you, but in my case, uh, with two 14th gen systems and my old 13th gen system as well, which I was never able to get the RAM stable at advertised speed. I'm now able to do so. So I really hope this helps you out. If it does, please do leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below as well to let us know that it's helped you. And uh, yeah, this, as I said before, this isn't new information. This isn't something that I've discovered myself. Uh, this was something that I just found buried away on Reddit somewhere, but I wanted to do my bit to get this information out there and I really hope that it helps you out. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching guys. And I will see you again soon. Bye.